I've had the privilege to be able to visit Egypt every year for the past five years. But for some reason, I always end up gravitating towards the pyramids, which don't get me wrong, are cool, I guess, but nothing compared to Egypt's vast beauty and history. I've always heard so much debate about the quote unquote true Egyptians or Nubian people. When King Ramesses became king of Egypt, he banished these Nubian people to Sudan and the rest he kept as slaves, all besides one, his wife or his favorite wife, Nefertari. Ramesses was a busy man, he had at least 34 wives, but he preferred his wife Nefertari to the others. That's why he built her that temple and it was the first time for a king to build that temple for his wife. Okay. Nefertari was Nubian. Like right. you, she was so beautiful. Oh. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna show uh, you her profile. Very similar. I think you are more beautiful than her. Oh my yes. god. And the eyes. You see? This is her profile. Oh. Same feature, same uh, tool. Yeah. But I think your body is more sexy than her. Oh. She was also known as the most beautiful woman. She was the one Nubian that he kept and made queen. Also, he built her this beautiful temple, but banished the rest of her people to Sudan and kept the rest as slaves. Fortunately, there are a small number of Nubian people still residing here in Egypt. A very small number of these Nubian people still reside here in Egypt in a village called the Nubian village of Aswan and I could not wait to go visit them. So I took a short flight out of Cairo and away from those pyramids. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, on behalf of Egypt Air, member of Star Alliance, Captain Atif Khedr and James Kouman, it was a pleasure to welcome you on board of this aircraft Airbus. 220, flight number MS-86 proceeding to Aswan. During our flight, we shall be maintaining an altitude of 29,000 feet and we shall cover the distance between Cairo and Aswan in 1 hour 20 minutes time. Hopped on a boat across the Nile, all to see these beautiful Nubian people. You guys, before I run out, I must talk to you about my holy grail. This is the Timmy Greens Superfood Blend with matcha, spirulina, and wheatgrass. It's a dietary supplement. I have literally, if you guys have been subscribed to me for at least the last year, you know I swear by this stuff. If I didn't live in hotels, I would use a blender and I would blend this with avocado, a banana, and a little bit of some sort of sweetener. When I tell you, this literally tastes like a matcha latte. I love the matcha latte from Starbucks, the green tea matcha latte. I get it with soy milk. When I mix this with soy milk, it literally tastes just like the one from Starbucks that I literally always get, which is amazing for me because I always go to countries that don't have Starbucks. I don't know if there's anyone out there. <laughs> okay, there are, there are. But I am one of the people who travel the most on this planet, okay? When I tell you I need a source of vitamins, I need a dietary supplement to literally keep me going. I need it like I travel way too much my body and I also skydive I put a lot on my body I, I, I live a very extreme life um, I need to be getting my proper 
nutrients literally every single day and I don't always have time. You guys, I literally mix with this with water and I put a little sugar in there. Sometimes there's sugar literally everywhere. Or if I have some honey, sometimes I'll put honey in here and I take it to go. It literally is so good and it gives me energy. I can't do coffee. Coffee literally makes me, my heart race. I can't do coffee and I also hate the taste of coffee. But anyways, you guys, I am obsessed. Not kidding. I actually use this stuff. Um, I love, love, love this Teamy Greens Superfood Blend. You can use my code MJ20 for 20% off your entire Teamy purchase. I genuinely, genuinely, genuinely love and use Teamy. Um, I want to just tell you guys how amazing this stuff is. Literally, the ingredients are so simple. Like, look at this. Hold on. You've got wheatgrass, chlorophyll, spirulina powder, spinach leaf powder, broccoli powder, kale powder, kelp powder, rocket leaf powder, parsley powder, celery powder, grapeseed extract, and dandelion extract. Also matcha powder, acai berry, Garcinia, Cambogia extract. <laughs> and it contains plant-based caffeine, which I need. Also, of course, it's plant-based, vegan, GMO, free, gluten-free, dairy. Like, are you kidding me? This stuff is just like 100% amazing. And you'd be like, oh, maybe that tastes nasty. No, it literally tastes amazing. Like, I need that stuff. I literally need it. I take this with me everywhere. Literally, I'm in Egypt, and I have it. It goes with me everywhere. This is sponsored, this portion of the video, but you guys know I do like five. How many sponsorships do I do? I turn down a lot because I only sponsor, uh, I only accept things I actually use. And you guys know how much I love Teamy. Their stuff is actually amazing. I have all the links down below for you guys to check out if you want to... Uh, use my code as well, MJ20, for 20% off your entire purchase. The stuff is amazing. You're actually going to love it. Try it. Come back to this video, and you're going to be like, oh my god, that stuff is so good. I've had so many people tell me how amazing that stuff is. I'm obsessed with Teamy. So yeah, let's get on to the rest of the video. Something I found so cool about Aswan is most of the hotels here are located in the water. Literally a boat had to come get me, take my luggage, and take me to the front doors of my hotel, which I thought was so cool. And they are super hospitable here in Aswan. Everything is done for you with a tip expected of course but all your luggage is carried every you don't have to lift a finger and you're literally brought right to the door of your hotel okay you guys I'm gonna give you a room tour of my room here in Aswan I kind of messed this up already but ignore that okay so and then here is the bathroom and a nice bathtub look at that wow love that basic really clean really nice bathroom then you walk through here and you got yourself a fridge and some water and just tea and stuff and then um, you can like have a peek into the shower right there kind of and then a bed, a picture of the Nubian town that is here, and then a little getting ready area, a couch, and I'm about to knock out because I'm so tired and I'll speak to you guys tomorrow. My first day in Aswan, I visited Abu Simbel, which is this beautiful, one of the most beautiful things I've ever seen in my life. King Ramesses' tomb, or temple actually, and his wife Nefertati's temple right next to it 
Um, I had this all in my previous video. If you guys want to go check that out, I will put a link right here so you can go to that video. This was day one in Aswan. Definitely a must visit. You must come see this. It is one of the most beautiful, intriguing places and things I've ever done in my life. Um, you're inside the history books, which is one of the reasons I love traveling so much. We finally reached the Nubian village and immediately you start to realize how run down and secluded these people are and this village is. Mainly they get their money from tourists like what I'm doing right now. So as soon as you get off the boat you're going to have children oh begging you for money and I mean begging you. It was also kind of interesting to hear everyone constantly asking me if I was Nubian. Apparently, I ex resemble these people a lot because everyone was staring and asking, was I Nubian or did I have Nubian lineage? <laughs> One. one. How do you say one in English? One in English. Yeah. Why? Why is it? It believes that it kicked the bad evils out of the house. Oh, that's why there's crocodiles everywhere. Yes, this is the small ones. I think we have a big one here. They believe crocodiles. Yes, there's a big one. Keep away evil. Look how tiny. As you walk through the Nubian village, you realize that there's crocodiles everywhere as pets or in boxes or glass boxes like you see here they're painted on the walls they're stuffed they're literally everywhere because the nubian people believe that crocodiles keep away evil and they need a lot of that because they are really suffering as a culture to stay existing Okay, interesting. The families here, they are big families, especially that they allow or when they had girl and she got married, she got married inside the house with her parents. Okay. He was explaining to me so that these Nubian Egyptian people do not die off, they are forced to. Um, they are forced to have uh, sex with their family members to reproduce. Otherwise, they will just die off. So he was telling me how uh, brothers and sisters ha are kind of forced to <sighs> reproduce within their own household, within their own family, so that these people don't stop being born, so that they don't stop existing. What type of evil do they keep away? <laughs> you know here, the envy, the people who envy you. Ah, uh, okay. Interesting. The families here, they 
We have big families. When you visit this Nubian village, you can sense how hard these people are trying to keep their culture alive. Uh, it's depicted everywhere. There's beautiful paintings on the walls everywhere, and they keep around their ancient artifacts, and they keep their traditional colors, their traditional wear, because they do not want this rich Egyptian culture to die or be taken over. Especially daughters, all of them, they will marry in the same house. Ooh. If a man, the man is going to... For some reason, I could not stop staring at this beautiful boy. To me, he was just so gorgeous. And it really showed me how beautiful these Nubian people are. They've got this beautiful, rich skin color, this gorgeous, curly hair, these beautiful smiles, and... They're just so sweet, which is kind of abstract compared to their lifestyle. They offered me this hibiscus tea, or they made it into juice because it was too hot to drink tea, which is also a ancient Nubian tradition. Hibiscus juice, or to drink it hot to be hibiscus tea. Right. This is a hibiscus flower. Oh, cool. It's recording already? Yeah. Uh, it's wet. Yes? It's wet. It's wet. It's wet. It's No, no. This is the view. Oh, I know. This is the old dam. Uh huh. <sighs> One of the coolest parts about visiting this Nubian village as I got to visit a Nubian school or makeshift school. This school was made to teach these Nubian people how to speak Arabic because within each other they speak Nubian language. They do this on purpose so that this language does not die off. Nubian language cannot be written, it can only be spoken, so they speak Nubian within each other for the purpose of keeping the language alive. But this kind of secludes them and doesn't allow them to interact with anybody else. So this school was built recently to teach Nubian people how to speak proper Arabic so they can get around. But this man kindly offered to give me a Nubian lesson, which was so cool. Mary Jane. Mary Jane. Mary Jane. Mary Jane. Mm -hmm. yeah. My name is Wahim. Nice to meet you. Wahim. Yes. Baby in Arabic. Okay. 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 ハムサ。ハムサ。アバハムサ。センタ。センタ。サバ。サバ。タマニア。タマニア。セタ。セタ。サバ。タマニア。タマニア。ケサ。アシャラ。ハシャラ。ケサ。アシャラ。ハシャ
Que es dish. Que es dish. Gorish. Gorish. Kolot. Kamot. Idu. 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 Isko. Isko. Demel. Demel. Isko demel. Isko demel. Where? 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 Yeah. Owi. 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 Tusky. 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 Yes. Tusky. Tusky. Okay. Alphabet. In Arabic. Because And just in time for sunset, we started to head back to Elefantine Island. This was a perfect time to start heading back down the Nile because it's when the sun starts setting and you have the most beautiful view of Aswan. You guys, I'm about to say goodbye to Aswan. I am kind of sad, but I've got to go back to Cairo. It's now 5.44, so I'm about to leave in like 20 minutes. Um, I'm a little sad because, I don't know, I just am, I don't know why. But uh, maybe I'll come back, maybe, I don't know. Like At this point, I'm just moving all around Egypt because the flights are, so cheap and so quick it's like anyways um, but I just wanted to show you guys I don't know if I showed you my balcony here at Movenpick but that is Elefantine Island right there um, this I believe is the Nile River this is the Nile and this is where we got on a boat here to go to Nubian village yesterday and this is Elefantine Island, which was believed to be, oh, here is Elefantine Island, which is believed to be the first point of Earth ever. The first known point on Earth. One of the first, because the, the Earth, Egyptians believed that the Earth was completely just water, right? The Earth was just water. The first piece of land on Earth, they believed, was this right here, Elefantine Island. And they called it Elephantine Island because there was elephants on the island. But they traded those elephants to different parts of Africa. Anyways, so much history in Egypt. Oh, I can't. But uh, yeah, I'm still packing up. If you guys 